Well, hi there. I'm here today with Jade, who is a green iguana, and she actually belongs to my buddy Rick Voss, who runs a, a reptile rescue, and he does a great job with these animals. This is probably like the quintessential pet reptile. When people see that you have a lizard, almost always they think, oh, is it an iguana? I've been asked that I don't know how many times. And that's because for a long time, I mean, this was the main pet lizard that people had. And might be the most recognizable lizard on planet Earth. Not only are they everywhere, but they're inexpensive and very impressive looking. This is a nice iguana. I should mention that. This is about as good as they're going to get. There are a few exceptions. Every now and then there's a, a well-behaved green iguana, but generally speaking, they're absolutely terrible. So we put them head to head with something a whole lot less common, but that will make your life a much better place. And that is the Australian water dragon. But the Australian water dragon is going to be comparatively expensive and difficult to find. So is it really a better pet? That's going to come down to our three head-to-head -head categories, which are awesomeness, because you wouldn't want to own it if it wasn't stinking awesome, expensiveness, and difficulty. Our first category is awesomeness. And I'm gonna tell you that both of these lizards are very cool looking. I love the look of a green iguana. I also love the look of an Australian water dragon. They've got a lot of really similar awesome features about them. I love those spikes down them. They've got really, really pretty colors. Very impressive, regal looking lizards. This is a female, and their heads are even quite a bit smaller than the males. And males really get incredible looking of both species. In fact, both of them are what you'd call sexually dimorphic, which means the males and females look different from one another. In my opinion, the iguana, especially a big male, is the more impressive looking of the two. But they're both really cool looking lizards. The big problem with iguanas is that they can be very difficult to interact with. Uh, males especially can become very large and very dangerous. They're full of weapons and they've got a really bad attitude, which is not a great combination. On the other hand, an Australian water dragon can be about as tame as a bearded dragon, and that's awesome. It's one of the best dispositions a lizard can possibly have. Iguanas have one of the worst. Even individuals that appear to be very tame and nice can, depending on just the, their point in, in their maturation, their, their age, the time of year, just the mood that they happen to be in, suddenly become very, very aggressive, very vicious, very territorial, and can hurt you very badly. That's, that's not okay. I honestly know of more people who have reported losing parts of their fingers to their adult iguanas than, the, than reporting having a really, really friendly adult iguana. I think they're out there, but they're few and far between. And when you get one that isn't nice, it's really, really not nice. And that's not awesome. That's just not awesome. And because of this, this first round, awesomeness, goes to the Australian Water Dragon. Our next category is expensiveness. And right up front, the Australian Water Dragon is definitely going to be the more expensive lizard. They're going to cost a lot more to buy. But that is because Australian water dragons are going to be captive bred. And that means that somebody is working really hard, putting in a lot of time and money and effort to produce these lizards, and you end up paying for that. An iguana, on the other hand, is available farm-raised, which is basically the same as wild-caught. It just means that they've got a yard full of iguanas somewhere and they go out and snatch up some babies. As a result, they have most of the same problems that you run into with a wild-caught individual. They're being shipped here, which is hard on them. They're going to arrive emaciated, dehydrated, and full of parasites that have been going crazy for however long they've been getting shipped. And so that's not a great thing, but they are inexpensive. Up front, unless you live in Australia, the Australian water dragon is going to be by far the more expensive of the two. The reason being that they are really a great pet, but they're bred by relatively few people. And so, economics, you're going to end up spending a lot on your Australian water dragon. Not a crazy amount, but a lot more than you would spend on a farm-bred iguana that you could pick up at any pet store. And if you have any questions about why Captive Bread is awesome, we've actually got a whole video right there that'll tell you all about it. We got this guy from the Great Basin Serpentarium. They produce Australian water dragons, Captive Bread, so if you're looking for one, make sure that you check out their website. We'll have a link to that down in the description. 
I recommend them for everything that they sell. Feeding will be similar in cost, and this is good timing because she's enjoying a good meal. It'll cost about the same to feed an iguana or an Australian water dragon. The, the iguana is going to eat more greens, and it's going to eat a lot more of them uh, because it's a bigger lizard, whereas the water dragon is going to eat some greens and some fruit, but mostly it's going to be eating insects, and insects are more expensive pound for pound. So overall, it'll be fairly similar, the cost of feeding iguana versus an Australian water dragon. The enclosure will definitely be more expensive for your green iguana. A lot of things about the enclosure will be really similar. The water dragon is going to need a larger water area than the green iguana. They're both going to need areas to climb, areas to bask, heat lamps, and UVB bulbs. They're all going to need that, but the iguana enclosure is just going to need to be way, way bigger. Whereas the Australian water dragon will need a comparatively small, still a large, but comparatively small enclosure, one that can actually be commercially purchased whereas you're almost certainly going to have to build the enclosure for your iguana. In the end, you will spend more money to buy your Australian water dragon, and you will spend considerably more money to house your green iguana. We'll go ahead and call this round a draw, though honestly, the water dragon might be a little bit cheaper in the end. When it comes to difficulty, if you set these lizards upright, if you give them the right kind of enclosure, the right kind of lighting, the right heat and humidity, both Australian water dragons and green iguanas, especially captive bred green iguanas, they're pretty solid lizards. They're really going to do just fine. Because iguanas eat mostly greens, and greens so you can buy at any grocery store, and most humans live by a grocery store, they're going to be easier to feed than our Australian water dragons, which are going to need a lot more insect feeders, which uh, can be di more difficult to find. You're going to need a pet store, you're going to need to order them online. We've got links to those down in the description. The reason that the green iguana is going to lose this category is because of their temperament. They can be very, very difficult to deal with. Think about owning a tiger that is shaped like a lizard. Uh, in addition to razor sharp claws and powerful finger removing jaws, it's also got a razor whip for a tail that it loves to use on you. That's about what you get when you get a green iguana. That, that razor whip tail, by the way, can definitely send you to the hospital for some stitches. All exciting. Of course, there are examples of people who safely keep green iguanas, uh, just like there are examples of people who have no problems with their pet tigers, but more often than not, it's gonna end badly. Even an ice iguana, when it reaches sexual maturity, can just suddenly change its personality completely, and that can be even more dangerous if you don't see it coming. Males, especially when they hit maturity, most of the time become very, very defensive. They're going to guard their enclosure. If you've let them free roam in your house, they're going to have a section of your house that is now theirs, and you're not allowed inside of there. They will aggressively chase you out of there and attack you and hurt you quite badly if they get to you. That's going to make things like cleaning their enclosure very difficult because they don't want you in there. You're not welcome there. And it's huge, and it will get to be a mess after a while. They make just terrible pets. There are some exceptions out there, but most of the time, they're horrible, and it's going to be a total gamble that you're going to lose the vast majority of the time. Even if you think that you have a well-behaved, nice iguana, don't be surprised at all if one day that changes completely. That is a lot more difficult, quite frankly, than just buying a lot of feeder insects and breeding some dubia roaches. And so, for that reason, for the category of difficulty, the Australian water dragon wins this one hands down. The thing is, iguanas, green iguanas make really terrible pets. The Australian water dragon, on the other hand, is one of the best pet lizards you could possibly get. It is better than any large iguana, and definitely better than the green iguana. Stay tuned for full videos on each of these lizards, for a full video on the green iguana and on the Australian water dragon. You're going to want to make sure that you subscribe and click, click the little bell so that you get a notification when these videos come out. And as always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Blue. Oh yeah, I know. Okay. Okay, just set her down. And we'll just let her do her she's thing. She's in blue or she is blue? She that's is blue. blue. Oh, she's cranky too. Can I come sit by you or are you going to kill me? I've never been around an iguana that wasn't trying to kill me, so... This is a new experience. Yeah, this is so... so my ability to trust her is uh, limited. I'm going to say some things about iguanas in general. I don't mean them about you specifically. All right, and I don't want you to prove any points during this video, <laughs> unless your point is we're a lot better behaved than you think. Deal? With a shot.
Are you? Please don't whip or bite me. Joey, you wanna? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just didn't know what to say. What do you want? Throw a hissy fit. I'm really glad we brought you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been studying iguana bites <laughs> and other wounds like all day long. Just, uh, yeah, don't, uh, know where to go. You want to come over here? Dang it. <laughs> oh, really... Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. This is where she stands. I'm happy with that. Are you guys okay with her just being over there? <laughs> so... <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Hope you didn't want these leaves. I do want them. Is it on camera? Yes. It's all worth it. <laughs> like a room in your house. Good throw. Uh, Michelle? Yeah. I'm so glad you came today. Of all the day, like, you have we didn't have any problems with the Savannah monitor. My dang strawberry, Jason. Get you done? <laughs> wow, you're a jerk. <laughs> Hi, Grumpy. And she's spent. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. I gotta breathe for a while. Yeah. Was that worth it? I can't flail around like that and breathe at the same time. This is gonna be the least enthusiasm they've ever seen from me. Okay. We're an awesome creature. What a cool beast. I recommend them for everything that they sell. One of the best breeders on planet Earth. Tell us more. You know, <laughs> and the owner, dreamy. <laughs> Green iguanas make terrible pets.